G'day. Having been, uh, you could say, the victim of many broken relationships, uh, as in the sense that I have been the child of um, marriage relationships that have failed um, multiple times, you know, like uh, parents that have married multiple times and been through multiple breakdowns. And I've been the child who's lived through those multiple relationships and multiple breakdowns and lived through what has been basically Brady Bunch type families that are just conglomerates of um, her children from her ex-husband and uh, his children from her ex-wife sort of, you know, mixture of things. So in terms of experience in the screwed up family relationship dynamic, I'd have to be an expert at it. So having said that, you know, I also studied psychology at university level and uh, I, I topped my first year uh, psychology course and was made a student representative for the Australian Psychological Society on my campus. Um, I could have you know, gone more in depth into psychology, but um, I ended up studying law after my arts degree. I didn't sort of go down that path to that extent, but I could have um, if I wanted to. But I have come across um, people who I would have to say exhibit symptoms of what people are now calling uh, narcissistic personality disorder. That's interesting. I don't remember that being in a diagnostic manual when I was studying psychology, but it's widely accepted now, the concept of a narcissistic personality. And I have certainly encountered these people in my own lifetime. But from the documentaries and things I'm seeing now on television, what I'm seeing is a classic uh, bias that always comes into these type of studies. And it's very sad, but it's very true that people jump very quickly into one of two camps. And it's down the old, well-worn path of gender stereotypes. So instantly people want to jump on this bandwagon and say that, you know, there are more men that are narcissists than there are women that men exhibit more predatory behaviours than women. Well, let me just say that this is really a very bad way to do psychology scientifically. Uh, it's falling into the traps of psychology itself. Uh, it's falling into the trap of um, a sort of actor-observer bias. You know, you being female saying that um, that men are the perpetrators, that, that men are the, um, uh, you know, are the predators, um, or vice versa, you know. So you have to step back with these kind of things and say, look, you know, let's not just instantly jump to a conclusion that um, there, is a, there is a gender bias at work here, because actually... There, there is natural precedence that suggests that the idea that, um, that the male gender is more predatory uh, or more evil or whatever um, is not true. Take, for example, the case of um, a pride of lions. Now, which animal in a pride of lions do you think is the most predatory? Well, if you know anything about lions, you know that the most predatory animal in the pride of lions is a female. It's the lioness. She's the one that does all the hunting and killing. That's just one example. So th this concept that um, uh, predatory behaviour is exclusively a male trait or is predominantly a male trait it's just simply not true. It's not true at all. 
It discounts people with a personality like mine, for example. I have an empathetic an empathetic personality, a caring personality. Um, I'm not a predatory person. I can empathise with people. Um, I try to help people. And that's borne out by the, the kind of... Uh, occupations that I've chosen that's why I work for a non-profit charity organization that does charitable work for other people that's why I work in a hospitality industry where it's not about me it's all about the guest it's all about providing a service it's not just about making money and buying luxury items for myself but what happens in the case of what's called the narcissistic personality is that a narcissistic person who's all about self-aggrandizement, that they want to use other people to make themselves feel good, to bolster their own ego, to boost their own pride, um, just to make themselves feel good or even to get off. On, on a relationship dynamic like that. So what they will tend to do, uh, or they will gravitate towards people that are typically um, caring people, like myself. So narcissists will tend to gravitate towards a personality like mine because I am naturally an empathetic, empathetic person, because I'm naturally a caring person. They see that and latch onto it and they seek to use that aspect of my personality. They want to try and use me to self-aggrandize themselves. But there comes a point where they would realize that they've been caught out. They've been found out that this person that they're trying to use to self-aggrandize themselves is co has cottoned onto them. And what these personalities tend to do is once they've been found out, um, you know, as somebody who's using other people for their own self-aggrandizement, they will instantly try to roll reverse. So they, they want to go from being the perpetrator to being the victim. That's what they do. You know, you've caught them out, so suddenly they're the victim. They're the victim here. You know, suddenly you've, you're the bad person. You're the demon. So that's what they'll do. If, if they're caught out by somebody who critically analyzes the relationship dynamic and realizes at some point this person that I'm involved with is narcissistic. Um, they're purely using me uh, for their own emotional well-being or whatever. But there's nothing beyond that. There's no depth to this relationship. It's just I'm being used by them. So once, once this person critically analyzes a relationship and comes to that conclusion their behavior or their relationship dynamic changes and then the narcissist becomes aware of this. And when they become aware of it, their reaction immediately is going to be demonize this person. So you who are the kind, caring, compassionate, empathetic person have suddenly become the devil. You're the bad person. You're the demon because... You're, you've pointed out a character flaw in, in, in me or whatever, in the narcissist. You've pointed out their, their character flaw. Um, so that makes you a demon. That makes you a bad person and somebody that should be um, demonized and ran down. So th th this is kind of the problem we, that we get with this whole dynamic, you know, is that it really can turn people who normally are 
uh, good-natured, caring, kind, compassionate and considerate people uh, who are being victimised into a person who's suddenly identified as being a perpetrator or a predator. So suddenly the victim is the perpetrator and the predator. And from, from what I know from relationship dynamics, um, you know, as I said, of, be, of being, you know, the, the sort of, for want of a better word, the victim uh, of, of multiple failed relationships, um, failed marital relationships and failed family dynamics, that um, the way these people operate is to is, is at a highly manipulative and emotionally and psychologically um, traumatic and devastating level you know they can use all kinds of um, things within an arsenal to to manipulate a person um, to get their own way to make out that they're the victim or they're the good person, and that you're the bad person, you're the demon. So, you know, and the concept of gaslighting comes in here, where, you know, you, you're forced into a corner and feeling as though your sanity is slipping away, you know, feeling as though you're doubting the fact that you're a kind, compassionate and caring people person who cares about other people. Suddenly you're being cast in the light of being a demon, you know, a perpetrator, a predator. And it, it really stinks. It does stink. So I encourage people to, to stop doing this. Stop stereotyping and saying that it's, it's predominantly men that are narcissistic and predominantly men that are um, predatory, you know. Women are extremely good uh, at hiding their, their, their manipulative behaviours. They're much better at being subtle when it comes to being manipulating. So it's, it's kind of the difference between somebody who, somebody who comes at you with an axe in their hand uh, as opposed to somebody who sticks a knife in your back. So it's very subtle, and that's the thing with that I've noticed the the emotional awareness um, or emotional control or ability to see people's emotions. I mean, even if a psychopath um, can't experience emotional empathy the same way that an that an emotionally empathetic empathetic person does they can still see it and notice it and understand it in another person and use it or try to imitate it they'll imitate it they're brilliant at imitating things you know they can slip through um, society completely unnoticed people like Ted Bundy you know um, a psychopath um, you know, but they slip through society unnoticed because they're brilliant at imitating. And a lot of these personality traits go together. So you get, um, they talk about a dark triangle. You know, you've got people that are not only um, narcissistic, but they're psychopathic. Um, you know, they've got more than one dark personality trait. Could be three or more of them mixed up in the one personality. You know, and... and Narcissistic is only one of them. So that's basically my thoughts on it. I think I think I've pretty well covered what I wanted to say. Um, don't jump into the trap of just stereotyping people. Um, it's not about all men are this and all women are that. That that's exceedingly narrow minded. And we should really be way beyond that at this stage, at this day and age of society, you know. 
Stop playing gender cards. It's not helpful at all. You know, I was exceedingly disappointed um, at former Prime Minister Julia Gillard because she just kept playing. I mean, she was given the opportunity to be Australia's um, Prime Minister. She should have focused upon the role of Prime Minister as a leader and should have completely, completely set aside um, anything to do with gender. It's got nothing to do with it. Gender has nothing to do with being a leader. If you're a leader, consider yourself, for all intents and purposes in public life, as having no gender identity for the purposes of public life. Privately, you do, of course, but publicly, you have none. As a public person in an important leadership role, I would suggest absolutely no gender identity. Gender neutral. Because you have to be, to be a leader, to be a true leader, you have to be gender neutral. You can't see things from one point of view and disregard the other point of view. Because that's a bias. You're becoming biased. You can't keep playing um, your own personal identity as a, a card and saying, um, this didn't work in public life because this is who I am in my personal life. That's, that's not going to work, is it? Really, you can't bring personal life into public life. They have to be quite distinct. You have to be able to separate yourself and say, look, I'm a leader here. Um, my personal life is not a part of my public life. My personal identity is not a part of my public life. I've got to be completely neutral, unbiased. I've got to be a representative of my constituents, everybody. And that's a diverse community. I can't be biased if I'm going to be representative. Okay, case hurrah.